All right, in this video, we're gonna pick right up from where we left off on get elements by class name. This is very beneficial, even if you're not interested in this Ethereum application that I'm using here. This can be helpful in helping you navigate the document object model to get information from websites. Um, we're using Tasker to do this, a little bit of JavaScript. And before you proceed any, for, or any further, forward make sure you have watched the following two videos where i talk about javascript arrays kowp broadcast we'll be using that here and some looping so that was a video i did maybe about a week or so ago and then also make sure you watch the one i just posted recently on get elements by class name important for getting info from websites and also our goal in this video is to get all of these numbers this one this one this one this one this one and this one and we're gonna get them real fast okay and before we dive any further, in this uh, task that we created in the previous tutorial, the way I showed you to update it is you come down here, you click on it, and you let Tasker run that task. And once it runs it, it's going to update it with whatever price is up there. Uh, Ethereum price has been updated, so it's back to 30302. As you can see, this thing is going crazy right now. Um, it was at 350 last night. It's jumped down to 279 just a few minutes ago. And now if I refresh this, it's back up to uh, just over $300 if this website will refresh. I guess my internet's a little bit slow. But as you can see, it is going crazy right now, um, going up and down like a roller coaster. Anyway, I'm interested in all this stuff, all these things that I see here. It says that today's low was $140.59. I wish I had seen that. I would have bought some more, but <laughs> all right, let's loop through these. Let me show you what I'm talking about before we go back into Tasker. As a matter of fact, though, I lied. I do want to show you one thing real quick. I put a little caption in the previous tutorial where, you know, we were tapping on our home screen to get it to update. Well, we can also set up a profile in Tasker and for every 15 minutes, let me show you how to do this. I'm just going to delete this one and I'm going to recreate it for you. Basically, I want this thing to update without me having to press it on my home screen. That way I can, if I cut my phone off or if I'm away from my phone for a little while, I can at least come back and get somewhat of an update without having to tap the screen. So I'm going to go to plus in profiles, go to time uncheck these two boxes here and let's just tell it to repeat every 15 minutes. So just like that, and once we back out of here, select the task that you want to run. So every 15 minutes, we're going to run this task, Ethereum price, which is the one that I have right here. So for now, um, we're gonna let this be and we're gonna go back into the developer console a little bit more and we're gonna look and see how to loop and get these prices rather quickly. So inside of the developer console, document dot get elements by class name RP, and I'm going to take away some of this stuff for right now. But this is what we were talking about yesterday, and uh, what we have here are six items: one, two, three, four, five, six. And notice it was highlighting those over there in blue as I moved my mouse through them. Well, those are the six pieces that I want. I want the price, I want the percent change, today high, today low, today change, and then the market cap. Well, luckily for us, if you recall in the previous video, if I did a zero and I did dot enter text, it's gonna return this one right here. Luckily for all of these, the enter text is gonna work. Sometimes that's not the case for some websites, but for here, we're good. So now again, to kind of recap real fast, document .get elements by class name RP zero right there inside of those brackets, it's gonna to go to that zero index and it's gonna go look at its enter text. Well, like I said all of the inner text will work so if I go to the one index and I look at in inner text right there 1359 which is that one right there all of these inner texts are going to work like that so to show you that without looping first of all I'm going to change this to a one I'm going to come in notice 1359 all I'm doing is changing that number and this is where a loop can be be very helpful to get this information much faster there's our two and then here is our three. You can see this can get real uh, redundant and that's why we have four loops. There's number four. Um, that Sometimes this stuff will pop up inside of your developer console. Don't worry about it, I don't know what it does. Um, something block, anyway. Uh, and five, all right. So we got all of those there and as you can see these numbers here um, match this. Now they may not in a second because this thing is changing uh, the prices and all that stuff, but nonetheless we have them. So we have them like that, and we could go into Tasker and do all of those pieces, but sometimes, suppose you had 30 of these things that you wanted to get. I do not want to type in 30 of those things. I want to loop it. I want to let Tasker and JavaScript do all the work. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create an array in our developer console. 
The way we can do that, I'm just going to say Ethereum array or whatever you want to call it is equal to a blank array. All right, so I've defined my array. I'm going to press shift and enter um, because I'm going to keep on. If you press shift enter, it's not going to apply the code yet. And what we want to do here is want to do a for loop. So for i equals zero. Now I mentioned for loops in my previous or in one of those two videos, the one on JavaScript arrays. Now I tell you what, let me delete this for right now. Let me show you one more thing. I'm going to go back to get elements by class name RP and I'm going to come right after that parentheses and say dot length. That's going to tell you right there dot length returns how many items you have in this array and we do have six items indexed from zero to five. That's how JavaScript works. It starts indexing at zero. So we have six items. Now let's do our for loop. Um, now we could define a variable for this to avoid having to type this in but for now I'm just going to copy and paste that into my for loop. So for i equals zero, and then I want i to be less than this thingamajigger right here. As you can see, some of this stuff's gonna start popping up. And now you might say, well, why can't we just let it be less than six? That's absolutely fine. But maybe you have a website where maybe you might have the, the, num the number of items in your array may change. By you using this code, it will change dynamically with it. But we could easily put I less than six by all means. But I'm trying to cover a few of those uh, different ways of doing a for loop here. So we got I equals zero, semicolon, I less than six in this case, semicolon. And then we'll do I plus plus. Close up my for loop stuff put a bracket and I'm gonna press shift enter again. So now I'm on my next line of code just to kind of keep things organized. Now what we want to do here is we want to push stuff into that array. Well, let me define that array again. I need to put that above my for loop. I called it Ethereum or ETH array and I used a blank array just like that. So what we want to do inside of this blank array, we want to push some stuff into it and what that will do so we do eth array or whatever you called your array dot push that's going to take uh, essentially we're going to push these numbers these items these inner text pieces we're going to push them into the array and when it pushes that number into it it's going to put it on to the end of the array so if you already have one item in the array when you push it that new item that you push is going to become the last item in the array so we're going to push these in there and they're going to be in order as you'll see right here in a second so eth array dot push parentheses and now I'm just going to copy uh, this piece up here because that's the way we can get our prices or our percents or whatever. But what we want to change here is we don't want the index to be zero. We want the index to be I now. So what this is going to do, I is equal to zero. So it's going to get the zero one. Boom. Then it's going to run this code again and it, it's going to add one every time in this for loop. That's what this I plus plus means. It's going to add one to it and it'll keep running this code here as long as I is less than six, which is the length of that uh, get elements by class name RP dot length. Remember how we said that was six a moment ago. Just some few things here to get our uh, typing our syntax correct or whatever you want to call it. I got a parentheses here, so I need to close that parentheses up. And again, this is going to push those pieces into this blank array that I have right now. I'm going to do shift enter and I'm going to do a bracket to close my code. You can close it up here too, um, however you see fit or however you want to do it. And I think we should be good to go. So if I press enter right now, it's returning a six. Well, what is that six telling me? Since I have created this array, ETH array, I can type that in and press enter and now check this out. What if what the uh, developer console, this JavaScript's just done, this piece right here is that it's come and pushed all those inner text items into my array. As you can see, we have those right there. So that's those same pieces that I was showing you up here. Now the numbers may be different because the website has updated, but nonetheless, we are still getting each piece. Pretty cool, huh? Now we're ready to do this inside of Tasker. So I'm gonna go into Tasker and we're gonna change a few things. So I'm gonna disable this KLWP send variable because I wanna be do a KLWP broadcast because since we want to send over, you know, six items, to KOWP, I don't want to do six of these sim variables. Or you can imagine if you had 30 of them, you don't want to send over 30 uh, different KOWP sim variables. We can actually incorporate our KOWP broadcast task into our for loop. So that's something that I'm going to do a little bit different versus what I did over here. 
So I'm going to go into my JavaScript, and I'm going to go ahead and delete um, this stuff back up until the DOM parser thing. So I'm going to delete all this right to here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy over all of this here, that for loop that I did. So what this is doing is it it's basically creating our JavaScript array. I'm going to put a little enter right there. So we have Ethereum array. It's a blank array. Uh, we're going to push some stuff into it. And the only thing I need to change now is I need to make sure it's not document. Remember, I mentioned this in the previous video. We used doc. And then I need to make sure I do it down here as well. Okay. And now one more thing you want to do as well inside of here is uh, even though I call this ETH and capital A, I just come here and put a lowercase um, because Tasker can have a little bit of an issue accessing uh, variables where you use a capital letter. It's dealing with that local variable, global variable uh, inside of Tasker. But for now, if we just change our capital A's to lowercase a, so we have ETH array and ETH array, that's where we use those two pieces. Now, if we try to access this inside of Tasker right now, the way you can access a, a an array inside of Tasker, I'm just going to flash and I'm going to do percent. That's how you get a variable or accessing variables or use variables in Tasker. And I called it ETH array. And since it's an array, we need to use parentheses in Tasker. That's one difference between Tasker and JavaScript. There are more coming. So if I click play now, um, we get this flash that it's been updated, but now we don't see anything with the ETH array. You saw a blank. Let me show that to you one more time. We see that blank right there. So it's flashing that the price has been updated. Now what I've done too is I've just disabled this HTTP get for a minute. I'm going to cut it back on in a second. Um, that's slowing down this task and it's slowing down the video. So if I come back into my JavaScriptlet and I come in front of that variable, uh, the array variable that I have right here, if I put var in front of it and now if we rerun this, we should actually be getting the list of those prices. So let's see what we got. Boom, now we have all of our prices. So what you could do right now is you could send over each individual item from this array to KOWP using six KOWP send variables. I'm not going to show that to you, but what I do want to show to you before we do our KOWP broadcast is I want to show you how you can access individual items inside of this uh, array that we now have inside of Tasker. Well, JavaScript indexes with zero, starts in, it starts at zero, whereas in Tasker it starts with a one. So this right here should give me the uh, price. Now again, let me repeat that. Um, indexing of zero in JavaScript will correspond to an index of one in Tasker. Make sure you don't forget that. So if I back out of here, that's how I'm going to access the first element, which is going to be this one, which actually is going to be the index of zero. So let me cut uh, this back on and let it run. That way we can get an up-to-date price. So I'm going to run that. So we have 302.11. Now let's refresh this over here and see if we have 302.11. So as you can see, it is the same thing. That's great. Now, all that said, what we can do, if you don't want to mess with your array in Tasker, we actually don't even have to create an array. So I want to cut this off right now. But I'm trying to show you some things to help you, you know, learn a little bit more about Tasker at the same time doing a little bit of JavaScript. So back inside of here, we don't even really need the array if we don't want to have access to these numbers directly inside of Tasker. If you want to get them over to KOWP, you can do a KOWP broadcast right within your for loop. Now, what I'm going to do for this video here, though, I'm just going to let the variable array stay there just in case I want to access those prices directly inside of Tasker because I've created that variable array. I have the items pushed into it. But what we can also do is we can come to uh, right after we did this array push with all this stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to enter down one piece. So now what you can see what I've done here is that I have gone in and I've put in that perform task uh, KOWP broadcast that I've talked about in a recent tutorial um, the ones the two videos that I've told you to watch uh, with the 10 um, that stands for like the priority I find that 10 works okay this is what I'm going to name my variables in KOWP so ETH zero because it's still inside that for loop 
ETH1, ETH2, ETH3, uh, all the way up to five. And then what's going to be the value of the variable It's going to be ETH array. And then by you using it like this, it's going to access the, the index of zero, one, two, three, four, five, which is going to be those prices, percent drops and all that stuff that we have over here. Now, something I do find as well, uh, the exit right here. So outside of your for loop, notice my curly braces here outside of that do exit with parentheses and a semicolon uh, this right here I find that it will sometimes all the values don't get sent over but I find that exit will uh, help that in making sure that it does happen um, there is some rhyme and reason for that I can't remember it off the top of my head but that's over at the tasker JavaScript again I mentioned that in a previous video too if you google tasker JavaScript there's a lot of reading there but that's where I got a lot of this information too and and also, you know, I should have mentioned this sooner, but David Pincher, man, he's helped me out a lot on this as well. So all of this, now I'm still using my array, kind of recapping on all this stuff. The array push, that's allowing me to create this array that I can access inside of Tasker. But now we have a second way of accessing this information. And it's going to be right directly inside of KOWP since we're doing this broadcast task here. So don't forget your exit. Let's back out of here and let's run this task one time to make sure it's going to get sent over to KOWP. So if the ETH price has been updated, let's back out of here, apply it, press the little tasker symbol, let's go back to the home screen. Now, let's go into here and let's change our text in KOWP and see if this actually worked. No longer is our variable name Ethereum anymore, it is now ETH and the first one this one give me that price is zero so it says 298.53 let's refresh this and see where it's at now so 298.53 very good and let's go ahead and get the next one because this is ETH the I so ETH zero the next one should be ETH one which is going to be the percent change I haven't talked about the arrow piece but we'll save that for another video so percent change is going to be broadcast tasker eth1 and let's see if it's going to come through so i think by us doing that exit um, i think that's helping these come through on the first shot because sometimes that might not work so there's your little warning there um today's high i should be copying and pasting this stuff So now I have all of that information, um, you know, by us doing a for loop. The for loop is a little bit hard to wrap your head around if it's the first time doing it. Um, I think that should be showing up correctly as well. So 27.41. And that's probably what's uh, the, the market cap's changing, which is why these prices are changing so much um, from what little bit I know about cryptocurrency. But I'm going to refresh this page. I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back to the home screen. So uh, this is refreshing. Let me run this task again. And whenever this says ETH updated, hopefully these two will be relatively uh, close. As you can see, everything's looking uh, just about on the money. Yeah, cool. So yeah, that was a lot. Um, but, you know, imagine me trying to explain all this stuff in one tutorial. I mean, I don't know how long this one is because I've stopped and, and gone in and made some changes um, as I've, you've probably noticed throughout the video. But there you have it. That's get elements by class name. We're getting several classes. We're getting the inner text from each one and we're looping through it in Tasker using some JavaScript. And then we're doing a KOWP broadcast to send it all over into KOWP. But then we also explored how to take, uh, create an array in JavaScript and also access those values within Tasker. Again, that has nothing to do with KOWP there. So you can use those values elsewhere. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.